coming up on iPads in the Classroom, managing device use. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today we're talking about ways to manage the ways kids use devices. A lot of parents and sometimes teachers are worried about how kids will use devices and that's partially because uh, it is open to the internet, because they have access to the store and they can download music and other things. Obviously there is a password set and so that controls some of it, but there's still worries and we want to make sure that everybody's feeling safe and doing the right things to make sure kids are staying safe when they are online. Now, the best way to do this, especially as kids grow up, is actually to talk about and practice digital citizenship. So really, a focus on the things that would make kids make the right decisions because they will be on our devices but they are very likely to eventually get their own devices or even be on public devices. We want to make sure they always make the right choices and the best way to do that is actually to talk to them about this. Common Sense Media is a great place to get some ideas about how to talk about it and uh, ways to approach it at different age levels. So that's a great place to go to get some information. But if you have devices right now in your classroom or at home and you want to make sure that they're used correctly and you haven't had that discussion or you're not sure you trust uh, kids yet to do that on their own, and remember the goal is for them to be able to monitor their own work, there are some ways to do this on the iPad. The first one, and we have talked about this before, is to go into the settings, to go in the settings into general and then we have restrictions and when you go to restrictions you're actually able to set behind a password access to specific items on your uh, on this that specific iPad and you have to enable the restrictions and then you have to say what out of all of this you want to restrict so I have a password that I've entered twice and remember the minute you share this with the child in uh, that will use this it will stop being effective. So you got to make sure you use something that they don't have access to. And you can see that immediately you can restrict access to the iTunes Store, to Music Connect, uh, and to a variety of apps. You can also do it by ratings and other things. We've shown this before, but this is important to know. This is available for free as part of the iPad. So if you're getting an iPad, especially if a child is going to use it, day in and day out and nobody else that's one of the best ways to do that and you'll have to disable the restrictions when you want to work on that iPad and download new apps or provide new opportunities or you've had these conversations about digital citizenship and you feel like they're ready to use more of the iPad in a productive ways at that point you can do that. You do have to know that disabling certain things would make them disappear from the main pages of the iPad, which means you have to go and re-enable them to be able to access them. And the second thing is that it will move uh, all, of your, uh, all of your apps around. So again, if it's your own private iPad and you are sharing it with a child, that may not be the best way to do that, but it is possible. If you're worried, that's definitely a way to do that. The second app I want to talk about that does something similar is called Time Lock. And what Time Lock does is it allows you to set a timer for each day. So if you're worried about device use when you're not there, uh, this is a way to do that. Whether you have other restrictions or not does not matter. And what the Time Lock does is once the time for that uh, child is done for the day, it starts sending a repetitive messages that stop all game playing and all ability to really interact. It doesn't shut it down, but it makes it almost impossible to use at all. And all you have to do, and since the device is enabled right now, is you go into parent options. I have to enter my code. There's a code here as well. You can see that you can allot the time per day. It'll reset every day. So once uh, it's a new day, it'll reset there. You can set it by minutes or by hours or both, obviously. And then you can enable it. And the minute you enable it, there's an hour to use it. Now, 
What is important to know is if a child stops using the iPad, the timer will stop running. So they don't have to worry about having to use it all in one time. The timer will remember how long they were actually actively engaged and will count only that time. Now, as a parent, you can re-enable it if you want to give them extra time or if you've got multiple users and you want to reset the time for the next user. So this is time lock and it's a great way to control the time kids spend on devices and we want to make sure that the time is appropriate. The next one is called Parent Kit and what Parent Kit does is it allows you uh, to control the device from your own personal device. So if you have a phone or a, a, your own iPad and you want to control the device the child has, you use Parent Kit, you set up your account, you can see that you get 30 days free, after that you have to pay, so you can try it out, see if it's working out for you, and then go from there. And basically what it does is it allows you to have the same controls that you have with the iPad on the native iPad that you have to change one at a time, but now you have them from a different device, so it allows you to work from your own device to change your child's device, enable more things or disable more things based on how you feel they should be using it or if you have multiple children based on what you think they should have access to. So this is available and this will work at a distance or if you're right there. And you can have different children, so you can have profile for each child and then what's allowed to them and what's not allowed to them by profile, which is extremely helpful if you have multiple kids or if you're working in the classroom and you have lots of kids working in the classroom and you want to make sure that there's a control there. So you can go ahead and see. And they do give you a warning that just like using the restrictions on the iPad, on the native iPad, the, using this will also change the way the apps are organized around the iPad. So you've got to be ready for that. So I can, you see, you go now to the child's device and you set it up with a code and then uh, all the settings that you want it to be. So it's got to be loaded on both devices and then it helps control. So today we talked about ways to control the iPad to make sure that it's safe for kids. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.